Why is the DXT small? First of all, to allow for accurate cursor movements. Secondly, to allow for any length of hand to use the mouse. Thirdly, to allow for comfort during use. The compact size of the DXT allows the hand to work from the position of function, ensuring comfort and precision. If we fill the entire hand like many large ergonomic mice do, the hand and fingers will not be able to manipulate the mouse or truly adopt the position of function. The shoulder is designed to position the hand in space, which then allows the hand to complete detailed work. The shoulder lacks dexterity compared to the hand, which is designed for dexterity. In fact, the shoulder and neck are the highest areas of the musculoskeletal disorders in the USA within office workers. To achieve accuracy, the forefinger and thumb need to be in opposition, which is allowed by the DXT's design. You can see from this picture the division of the motor cortex in the brain. The motor cortex is responsible for movement. The larger the body part on the picture, the more dexterity and accuracy it has. One third of the motor cortex is dedicated to the arms, legs and torso. Another third is dedicated to the face, tongue and voice. The remaining third to the hand, particularly the thumb and finger. Because of the division of the motor cortex, the fingers will always have more dexterity than the shoulder. The small size of the DXT mouse enables it to be held and manipulated in a similar way to a pen. This means that, as with a pen, nearly any hand or finger length can use the DXT mouse. The size of the DXT mouse enables every joint in the upper limb, from the finger joint to the shoulder, to work in synergy in the optimal biomechanical posture without any movement being either forced or blocked. Larger ergonomic mice fill the entire hand, which blocks natural movement of the hand and fingers, pushing movement to the shoulder, which is not designed to complete small movements of a cursor. Why the compact size of the DXT is not a pinch grip? There are two principal forms of grip, which are pinch and precision, and there are three essential differences between them. The first is that different muscle groups predominate each form of grip. Pinch grip mainly makes use of a group of muscles, which are known as extrinsic muscles. These muscles are located in the forearm and control crude movements and produce a powerful grip. The precision grip in uses intrinsic muscles of the hand and are entirely located within the hand itself. These are responsible for the fine motor functions of the hand during which little power is produced. A good example of precision grip is when you position the key into a lock using the intrinsic muscles with little power but then as you engage the key into the lock and turn, you use a pinch grip which engages the extrinsic muscles with high power. The second difference is that each grip involves a different type of muscle activity. The pinch grip uses static muscle activity when an object is grasped firmly in the hand without any movement of the muscles or the object. The precision grip utilizes dynamic muscle activity when an object is held by the fingertips and moved such as when manipulating a pen. The third and cardinal difference between pinch and precision grips is that there is very little power generated in the precision grip at all. Pinch grip is a form of power grip. It involves the extrinsic muscles, static muscle activity and a lot of power. The precision grip involves the intrinsic muscles, dynamic muscle activity and little muscle power. To illustrate the difference in power between the two forms of grip, the threshold at which damage appears to occur is 10 newtons, which is just over 1 kilogram. The force to click a mouse button is generally of the order of 75 grams, which is 1 13th or 0.075 threshold force required to cause damage.